Do you want to get rid of the cabbage worms organically, but you don't know where to start? You came to the right place, because in this video I will show you a simple method with which you'll be able to make some simple netting for raised garden beds that will help you protect your brassica plants. As you can see, my brassicas are getting some minor damage by the cabbage worm. And because I don't want to be vigilant like I was the previous ones, when I had cabbage worms almost every week in the garden, I thought to build some netting covers to prevent the cabbage moths to lay eggs on my brassicas that in the end will hatch the cabbage worms. This will be a simple project made with a few common items that are cheap and readily available. So if you like this kind of content and want to watch more of it, please let me know by leaving a like. And if you aren't already subscribed, please do it now so you won't miss any gardening content from me. So without further ado, let's build the netting for raised garden beds that will prevent the cabbage worms devouring our brassicas. To do this simple project, all you will need is a fine woven netting. It needs to be fine so the cabbage moth and other insects won't pass through it. Some sharp gardening scissors. I bought this pair a few weeks ago so I know they are nice and sharp. Some string or twine, you don't need a lot, just a few feet or so. And last but not least, four poles that will be used in the corners to hold the netting in place. The important thing here is that they need to be at least a foot taller than your brassica plants, so you'll be able to secure them in the ground. The first step is to place one pole in each corner of the raised bed. Place the poles on the inside corner instead of the outside corner of the raised garden beds. This will save you a few feet of netting material later on. If you find any stones or other obstacles that will prevent you from sticking the corner poles into the ground, move them a few inches to the left or right. No need to have them exactly in the corner. If you have plastic poles with indentations like I do, place them in that way that one indentation will face the opposite corner of the raised bed. You will see why in a moment. The second step is to tie the cord you are using from corner to corner. This will make an additional support for your netting that will be hang on the poles later on. To tie the cord, place it in the indentation mentioned before Go down and around it, like so. Pass behind the cord and as your navigation would say, make a new tour as soon as possible. Go around the pole once again and tie the cord like so. Make two knots just to be sure. Do this knot on all the four corners and with it your support for the net is done. So next comes the fun part covering your newly made structure with the net. The size of the net you will need is approximately twice as wide as your raised bed and three times as long. If you made a raised bed from pellets, like I showed you in that pinned video. Otherwise, calculate your netting size carefully. It's best to buy a few feet extra than missing the last foot. So when you pull the net over the structure, try to center it. I use this wide middle line on my net to line it up with the cross that the two structure cords did. Like this, you can perfectly line your net in the middle of the raised bed. I will use this sledge to hold the netting in place until this project is done. I did it with some leftover pellet wood, but you can use some stones or whatever you have on hand. As you can see, placing the netting in this manner will leave two sides exposed. But we'll fix that now. To do so, we we'll need to use some nails, a string or some clamps. I used nails because it's easier and faster and I had them on hand. To fix the netting in place with the nails, you will use it like a pin to hold the two sides together. The nail is sharp and will pass through this netting like a hot knife through butter. 
and because the holes on the netting are tight, it will hold it in place very securely. At the end your nails will look something like this and as you can see they are not moving and the net is secured in place. The easiest way to start this process of tying the two sides together with the nails is to fold the net together like this. This creates a nice overlapping edge that can be pinned together with the nails. Then you poke the first nail going through both sides of the netting, securing them in place. Continuing down the edge of your net, place one nail every 6 inches or so. The closer they are, the tighter the seam will be. And if you misplaced one nail and you want to fill the holes that it did, you can easily do that. Because the netting is made from plastic filaments, you will place them in the original place simply by scraping with a nail over the hole you want to fix. Before we finish up with the construction, let me ask you what brassica plants are you growing this year for your fall garden? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you go there, leave a like, that will help me a lot. So the last step before the finishing touches, after you close both sides of the netting cover for the brassica raised bed, is to cut the netting to length. To do so, use some sharp scissors that will do this job with this. But be careful when cutting, to leave a foot or so of extra material that will be used to tuck it in your raised bed so the cabbage butterfly can go inside under your netting. I took my time to cover both raised beds so it protect my brassica plants from the cabbage mold and I am sure this will get rid of the cabbage worm. If you like the raised beds that I made, be sure to check the video tutorial that I made. They are done with only two pellets and simple hand tools, like a saw, a hammer and tape measure, in about 30 minutes or so. So everyone of you who thinks that it has two left hands, I'm sure you can do it too. So click on the video that pop on the screen to watch the raised bed construction tutorial. I hope you enjoyed in this video tutorial on how I will get rid of the cabbage worms in my garden. And if you did, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe so you won't miss any gardening tips and tutorials from me. Happy gardening!